C51 is going to be in Parliament this week. You ready for it? Now, for those of you who don't know what C51 is, well, I'm going to have to strike a little terror in your hearts so that I can explain the anti-terror bill that is C-51. As we know here in Canada, it only takes one gunman to kill and create panic. Our government has vowed to make it tougher for those plotting terrorist acts to carry out their plans. New anti-terror legislation is being rushed through Parliament right now. Critics say it is not getting the scrutiny it needs. Terrorism is defined as the use of fear, terror or aggression to gain political advantage. And if you're not sufficiently scared enough, Here's an ISIS video for you. We are coming and we will destroy you. You're still not shaking in your boots? Well, what if I told you that some of our women are leaving to become ISIS brides? Currently, we are not able to prevent a high-risk traveler from boarding an airplane. Blaney says that's why the government's new anti-terror laws are needed, insisting there's no time to wait. These topics should strike such fear and terror in your hearts that you should be willing to give away all your liberties in a moment's notice. Why wait? Let's rush. Fact of the matter is this, ladies and gentlemen, that the international jihadist movement has declared war. Now, as Canadians, I think we've seen this political theater play out before in America, where terror was so great that they had to pass the Patriot Act. Radical ideology of hate. Terror uh, threats. Terror. 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 War on terrorism. War against terrorism. Global war on terror. Some would say it wasn't the best route to go, but Canada is definitely going to try it, and it's not going to come without its opposition. It's simply reckless and irresponsible to try to ram it through. The opposition wants a vigorous debate, but will likely get just three days for a committee to go over the bill. Not enough, according to this constitutional lawyer. This is the most fundamental rearrangement of our national security architecture since uh, the post 9-11 reform. So I don't understand w what the rush is. We have a former prime minister warning us about C-51 and not to rush the bill. I'm worried about the bill, not least because there appears to be a determination to rush it through Parliament, and I don't have the impression the government is prepared to, uh, to consider amendments, including regarding accountability. We have the Privacy Commissioner, the Privacy Commissioner, the Privacy Commissioner telling us this bill might be a little bit excessive. Uh, the picture that emerges is uh, that uh, national security agencies have very broad intrusive powers of surveillance. They can profile people. And I ask, is this the kind of society we want to, to live in? And we also have everyone's favorite Canadian, David Suzuki, saying that Bill C-51 could paint environmentalists as terrorists. Now, why would he say something like that? Newly leaked RCMP documents refer to some environmentalists as a threat to Canada's security. The intelligence assessment describes some anti-pipeline and anti-oil sands activists as violent extremists. As Margot McDermott reports, that has some groups worried they'll become targets of CISA surveillance under the government's new anti-terror bill. Secret RCMP documents warn environmental groups are trying to disrupt the petroleum industry and could break the law. The January 2014 report lumps all groups against the oil industry together, describing them as a highly organized and well-financed anti-Canadian petroleum movement. The anti-petroleum movement? Is it as well-financed as the petroleum movement? But environmental organizations worry their legitimate concerns are now labeled a security threat by police. It's basically saying anyone who's ever signed a, pi a petition against a pipeline can be viewed as a potential extremist. Some of the radical groups uh, in Canada... The federal government has used like similar language in the past, calling environmental groups foreign-funded radicals who want to destroy the economy. We must take further action. The documents were leaked at the same time that the government's proposed anti-terrorism law is making its way through Parliament. That law makes it illegal to interfere with any critical infrastructure or the country's economic stability. Now, these are concerns that shouldn't be taken lightly. The federal government says that we have a perceived threat in ISIS, and Canada's role in stopping that will be giving more power to CSIS. 
ISIS ceases. ISIS ceases. C 51 creates two new laws and changes 15 others. Critics say the bill gives Canada's spy agency ceases more powers without more checks. It allows government agencies to share your personal information more easily and maybe even with a foreign country and broadens the definition of terrorism so much that free speech and protesters could be at risk. Now I'm scratching my head trying to think of a time where secret police was a good thing, but I can't come up with it. And this is going to be, unfortunately, uh, the reality of the world that I think we're living in for some time to come and we're just going to have to face that head on and deal with it. Okay, let me try and, let me try and understand this here. There's terror out there in the form of terrorists, and we need a new bill to prevent this from happening. And there's no time because there's terror. Terrorism, 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 terrorism. terrorism, terrorism. The evil terrorists. Now, I think it's pretty clear to those that have been following this story that we shouldn't rush a bill like C 51. If this is truly an anti terrorism bill, wouldn't it be counterproductive if we rushed into this because of fear and terror rather than taking our time and consciously and rationally making the right choices? Terrorist, 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 terrorist. If we allow the fear of attack from terrorists to enter our parliamentary decisions, we will cease to have freedom and we will be trading in that freedom and our rights for a false sense of security. Terrorist, 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 terrorist. And if we're looking to follow the lead of the United States of America with this kind of legislation, then maybe we should take a look at what we can learn from their past experiences. Terrorist, 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 terrorist. Okay, 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 I think we get it. After September 11th, there was a lot of talk about... Terrorist, 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 terrorist. Okay, okay, but what about today? What is Obama saying about the national security threats of today? No challenge. No challenge poses a greater threat to future generations than climate change. But what about the foreign anti-petroleum movement? How are we going to stop them? Okay, so the number one threat to national security is climate change now. Okay, okay, let's, let's, see, let's see if I got my priorities straight. Let's go check the United States bookkeeping and see where to put their money. Now, if you want to know the priorities of any nation, all you got to do is check where their money goes. So, U.S., no surprise here, 55% or more is going to the military. Now, their cost of war is just unreal. Since 2001, we're talking about $1.6 trillion. Ugh! You need to take a look at all these numbers. It's just unreal. Department of Defense in 2014 is $730 billion. We need F-35 Joint Strike Fighters. Okay, give me 10 billion. These are enormous numbers. But you know what? This doesn't even factor in the national security budget. After September 11, 2001, the Homeland Security was created and hundreds of billions of dollars was poured into this thing. Now, some people are going to think national security. I mean, that must involve food, shelter, electricity. You know, the things that kind of make you secure? No, they don't. In fact, I'll show you those numbers. Here's the numbers on education, environment, foreign aid, housing assistance, and nutrition, and medical help. Well, as you can see, they don't even add up to the national security budget. And as Canadians clamor that we need to put more money and emphasis into things that matter, like the environment and climate change, our federal government has decided, hey, why not follow the proven method that is the American model. Right now we are looking at the Utah Data Center for the National Security Agency. This thing cost $1.5 billion and is the NSA's prime headquarters for processing all communication information such as phone calls, texts, and emails. The only question is, is it working? Are they catching terrorists? It just so happens that every time the FBI seems to catch a terrorist, they seem to be involved in the plot. In order to make sure that the public appearance of national security is good, the FBI takes the NSA information and literally helps mentally ill people join in a terrorist plot and then catch them. And that's why national security in the United States costs upwards of $800 billion. It doesn't come cheap if you're looking to catch terrorists.
especially if you have to manufacture them before you catch them. And this is something that we have to ask Canadians. If we are about to follow the United States model of homeland security, do we really have our priorities straight? And to emphasize my point, what if that money was spent into something that actually was national security? So right now we're going to take the cost of national security and trade it off for something else. Now the Department of Homeland Defense in the year 2014 has cost taxpayers $500 billion or more. So let's see what we can trade that off and see if we can actually get Homeland Security. Hmm, let's see, renewable solar panels on every roof? Now, we could put one for $1,000.500. So what if I put 330 million of them? That would cost 500 billion with 1 billion left to spare. So with the money that they put into Homeland Security, they could, in theory, put solar panels on 330 million U.S. homes. Need I remind you that the U.S. population is 318 million? That is more than one solar panel per U.S. citizen. And all they'd have to do is stop this crazy charade of creating terrorism and fighting terrorism. This is something that all Canadians need to realize before we jump on the bandwagon of C-51, do we really want to follow in the U.S. footsteps? Or do we want to turn around, do a full 180, and ask ourselves, should we really just be pissing away our taxpayer money into creating terrorists and fighting terrorists? Or should we put that money to good use and actually get some homeland security? Want to keep up to date with the daily uplifting info? Simply scroll on over to Facebook and give Valhalla's page a like. And if you miss any episodes, search Valhalla Movement in the YouTube search engine, subscribe to our channel, and enjoy the videos. Until next time.